All right, let's talk about good fats and bad fats. Let's start over here at the bad fats. Soy, corn, canola, cottonseed, all GMO, okay? Uh, the processing of these oils, they use uh, a solvent called hexane sometimes, which is uh, kind of toxic. Not to mention, there could be traces of glyphosate, which is an herbicide, but these are severely heated, and they're in a lot of foods that we eat. Um, they're definitely in some common foods like mayonnaise, okay? So if you just go to the grocery store and you just start reading labels, you're gonna see this one, number one, or this one right here. Uh, mayonnaise salad dressing is another big one right here. And even hummus, right? They don't even make it with olive oil anymore. They have to put these other oils in there. So you just need to start reading labels. So these are inflammatory, stay away from them. Uh, of course, margarine, that's a given, has trans fats. Crisco, for example, was on the market for 97 years. It might still be on the market, but as far as trans fats go, several years ago, I think it was in 2015, the FDA finally put a ban on it, but then they gave these companies three years to phase out of these trans fats. And so at this point, I don't even know who complied, who didn't comply, but the fact that trans fats the most deadly fats in our food supply has been on the market for 97 years is just insane. I mean, before the trans fats, we had things like tallow and lard. Lard is uh, pig fat and tallow is beef fat or lamb fat. And of course, ingrained into our mind, you know, these are poison and this is a health food. Remember the commercial where they talked about it's not nice to fool mother nature i don't even understand what that means because they are fooling mother nature with margarine the other place that so many people are getting these oils into their body which by the way are loaded with omega-6 fatty acids and it's just it's just way way out of proportion because we want to balance the six with the omega-3 fatty acid is in fast food restaurants, as well as other restaurants that are not fast food. Um, they put it in there in sauces. They definitely use it to deep fry things. And that's what you're getting. You're getting a lot of these oils. Let's just shift over to these oils right here. Safflower oil, sunflower oil, flax oil, sesame seed oil, which then turns into this tahini butter, and then certain nut oils like peanut oil, uh, macadamia nut oil. These are okay for certain people in smaller amounts, as long as they're cold pressed. Organic would be uh, preferable, but if you have too much, even safflower oil or sunflower oil can be way too, too much in omega-6. So I actually don't even recommend it, but in small amounts here and there, it's gonna be okay. Flax oil uh, is very estrogenic. Uh, the only time I would recommend that is for uh, females that are lacking estrogen and maybe they need a little boost over a short period of time, but definitely not for men. And then we have sesame seed oil or tahini butter. Again, small amounts, uh, make sure it's cold pressed, and you can get raw tahini butter, which is actually better than the overly processed. And then of course the nut oils, again, they're omega-6, so small amounts here and there, preferably organic. So this is a no, this is occasionally for certain people, let's get to the good fats. Um, cod liver oil is one of the best uh, oils to give you omega-3 fatty acids, both DHA, which your brain needs, and EPA, which your brain and nervous system need, as well as your immune system, not to mention vitamin D and vitamin A. And then we have avocado oil. That's it's really good to put on your salad, or you can even cook with it. It does have vitamin E. If you cook with it, the heat is going to kill off vitamin E. Okay, then we have lard, which is considered something that's going to clog your arteries. Of course, certain cultures, certain religions do not consume uh, lard or anything connected with a pig. Other people, when they think about pig or pig fat, they're thinking about processed uh, pork, uh, factory farming. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, getting something like wild boar fat, which are pigs, which are which are boars that have lived in the open forest in Texas. And uh, you can get the fat from that. It's high in vitamin D3. So ideally you'd want organic pastured 
uh, lard if you're going to actually get that to cook with or use in certain recipes. But if we were to compare this with this, this is like synthetic plastic. And this has been used for a very long time. And it doesn't create the oxidation that these type of fats do. It's very stable. It's good to cook with. And then you have kale, which is beef fat. I would recommend grass-fed. You can get either bison, beef, or lamb. It's great to cook with. There's a lot of vitamins. There's a lot of nutrition, and it won't irritate your gut problems. So um, either one of these is good for someone with an autoimmune disease that has a lot of inflammation in the gut. Uh, camel fat, okay, yeah. which is some people have never heard of that, but yes, camel camels have fat, and you can actually buy that fat, and you can cook with it, and you can put it in various recipes. It's loaded with B12. It's loaded with the active form of vitamin A. It has good amounts of omega-3 fatty acid. It has good amounts of CLA, which is a healthy type of fat that actually can stimulate your metabolism. Then we have butter, okay? Grass-fed, I would always recommend. If you could find organic raw, that would be the ideal situation. But butter has vitamin K2, omega-3 fatty acids, and CLA. Uh, organic ghee from grass-fed cows is also really good to cook with as well. It's clarified, which means they get rid of all the solids. So you're not going to be exposing your body to any type of protein particles that you could have an allergy to or the lactose, which is the milk sugar. But for the most part, you're not going to see much of that in butter. But for some people that are really sensitive, they should do ghee. And then, of course, we have olive oil, one of my favorites. Um, always get the extra virgin and get it from a real quality source. Um, I order this from this version right here. I love this version. It's from Italy and it's high quality. The farm where they grow this takes great pride in making high quality olive oil. And um, it's just very, very fresh. It's like way different than stuff you would get at, you know, in America at Costco, which I don't even know if it's legitimate. But this is a seriously high quality product. I'll put a link down below if you want more information about it. I don't get any kickbacks, but I like to recommend products that are high quality. And then we have palm oil, which is very controversial. So the type of palm oil that I would recommend is the eco-friendly, environmentally friendly palm oil that uses certain farm that doesn't destroy our planet. Uh, the red palm has some uh, pretty, pretty high level of antioxidants as well as beta carotene. And then we have coconut oil, okay? High in lauric acid. It turns into ketones. It'll help ketosis. And it's really good to cook with. And of course, you'd want to get the coconut oil that's also eco-friendly. All right, so there you go. There's a quick summary of the good and bad oils and these right here that kind of fit right in between. Hey, before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof your immune system. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today.